tonight, saints, I would like to ask that you would open up your Bibles to the book of Haggai. The book of Haggai chapter 1. The book of Haggai chapter number 1. Hallelujah. And uh, you will find these recorded words and beginning at chapter 1 of verse 1 of the book of Haggai. I would like for you to follow along with me. Hallelujah. That God might speak, O oh Lord, to his church. God speaks by his spirit and he speaks by his word. His word is his voice. If you want to know what God is saying, he will let us know by his word. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord. By Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel the son of Shatiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came what, saints? Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Verse 5, saints. Now, verse 8 says, Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build this house, and I will take pleasure in it. I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Verse 9, saints. And verse 12 says, Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shatiel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, did what, saints? Obey the voice of the Lord their God, and the word of the Lord God of God, and the Lord Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you saith the Lord. In verse 14, saints read, And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shatiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Let the church say amen. I praise God for the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. And saints, God, he had a word for his people. Hallelujah. In the time of Haggai, in the time of Ezra, as they were building the house of the Lord. And God has the same word for his saints today. Stop neglecting your spiritual house. Stop neglecting your spiritual house. The saint of God has two houses. And it's not the house or the place where you dwell in where you occupy and spend your time. But the house that I'm referring to is your physical house, which is with respect to your body, and your spiritual house with respect to your soul. The saint of God that is filled with the Holy Ghost 
receives not only a new spirit, but receives a new mind. The saint of God has two minds, a carnal mind and a spiritual mind. And what takes place in our houses is a battle. For the spiritual mind looks to make provision for the spiritual house. But the carnal mind looks to make provisions for the physical house. And it is necessary in order for us to maintain life, sustain life, to make provisions for this body. We need to provide certain things for the body so that it can remain strong, so that it can remain functional and healthy and active. This body, we need to provide food for it. For it is food that provides strength and nourishment for this physical body. Well, the spiritual house Hallelujah needs food too. And God, he provided an ordained way by which his people are fed. His people are able to hear and receive a word from the Lord. In the same manner that God spoke to his servant Haggai and he did not send the word directly to Darius or send the word to Zerubbabel, but he sent the word through his servant. And his word was to be spoken to the people. It was not Haggai's message. It was God's message. And today, God, he has a servant that he uses to speak to his people. Hallelujah, that servant is an under-shepherd that might feed the flock of God. And the word of God is always available, and our responsibility as sheep is to make ourselves available to the table of God. And so in order for us to maintain spiritual strength, Within our spiritual house, we need some food. Hallelujah. This food you can't find in the refrigerator. Oh, but the spiritual food, it comes from above. And I thank God for there's nothing that can satisfy my soul, nothing but the word of God. For there's food we eat for the natural house. We just don't eat anything. But we eat what is uh, taste good to us. Eat that which satisfies our, our taste buds. We, we want it to taste good. We just don't eat anything. Hallelujah. There's something about God's word. Sometimes it's not always good going down. But God, he will make it sweet. Hallelujah. When you let it get on the inside, ah, and when you let it, hallelujah, change your ways, when you yield to the way of God. We also make provision by washing our bodies, our physical house, for this is a time that we take care of the body, we remove uh, contaminants, remove those things that which we say are dirty, that makes us unclean. And uh, we provide a daily cleansing for this physical house, where our spiritual house needs cleansing too. Hallelujah. Uh, dirt accumulates whether you see it or not, whether you realize it or not. If you look hard enough, you'll see a film of dust 
on areas in your house that has not been touched for some time. That shows you that dust and dirt just accumulate. As we live in this unclean world, hallelujah, things that attach themselves to us, our mind, our ears, we hear things, and we need the cleansing from God. It is his word that washes and renews our mind. So that the spiritual mind can be refreshed. Hallelujah. The spiritual mind might be active. Oh, Lord, within our spiritual house, he's a good God. The body also needs sleep. We must make provisions. Because when we don't receive our proper amount of rest, oh, this body gets irritable. Oh, this body... Oh, is tired, can't function in a normal way. Hallelujah. And it's necessary to get proper sleep that the body might recharge itself. You can become mentally fatigued as well as physically fatigued. And the body needs to rejuvenate itself. There's healing that comes through sleep and rest. Within our body, we wake up, we feel refreshed. Hallelujah, we feel brand new. Hallelujah, well, there's a rest mm, for our souls. And Jesus let us know it's not just a, a peace and quiet, but it's a peace with God and it's a peace from God. Oh, there is a resting place. See, your bedroom is, is like the place where you rest and you lay down. Don't you know the worst thing you can do is put a television in your bedroom because it becomes a distraction. And that room is not just set aside for a place of rest. You find yourself doing more television watching than rest for the body. Hallelujah. But saints, let me tell you something. Mm, there's a resting place for your spiritual house. Oh, uh, there's a place where you have to get to, whereby there's no distractions. And there's no one to, nothing to draw your attention uh, from you focusing on God, talking with God, communing with God. Hallelujah. And when you get to that resting place in God, hallelujah, you want to stay there as long as you can. Uh, there, there are times when you wake up in the morning and you wish you were going to stay in bed all day long because you felt as if you didn't get enough rest. Oh, but when you get to that resting place for your soul, mm, it's such a good, good place in God. Hallelujah. Oh, you just don't want to leave. You want to stay as long as you can. Hallelujah. Oh, and just enjoy I have the goodness of the Lord. Enjoy the fellowship with God. God is already at the resting place. He's waiting for you. To make time. Hallelujah. And so when we neglect our spiritual house, we are neglecting to make ourselves available. Oh, Lord, that our spiritual house can be refreshed and restored and strengthened. Hallelujah. The fourth provision that we make for our houses, when I say we wash Hallelujah, our house, we provide food, we provide sleep or rest. And the fourth thing we provide for our physical house is entertainment. Uh, entertainment represents the things that make us happy, the things that we find pleasure in. Hallelujah. And... Uh, we realize there's so many different forms of entertainment in our world today. Some good, hallelujah, and some not so good. Hallelujah. Some may be good for the flesh, but has a, a negative 
impact upon your soul. A saint of God cannot participate in every form of entertainment that's available. Lord, that's the separation, hallelujah, that we must adhere to if we desire to please God and keep our spiritual house, oh Lord, in good repair. But there is a joy, hallelujah, for the spiritual house that can compare, hallelujah, to the natural house. <laughs> oh, it's a rejoicing in the God of my salvation. Eh, you don't have to spend any money for it. You don't have to go to a certain place, to a certain city, a certain state. Hallelujah. All you have to do is make yourself available by praising God, by thanking God. Hallelujah. Turning off the television to entertain the flesh and turn up Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes the entertainment for the flesh, that volume is up too loud. We need to turn that down and turn Jesus up. Oh, he's a good God, saints. Well, God, he wanted his people to stop neglecting the spiritual house. For they had decided within themselves that we're going to focus on our own houses. We're going to put all our effort and our, our time into the houses that we have built. God had blessed this people. It was a, a remnant, a small group to return from Babylon uh, to begin rebuilding the house of the Lord. And God had provided everything that they needed. All of the supplies. He provided all of the type of workers. And when they returned back to Jerusalem, they had an excitement. They had a joy. And they were making progress. And the moment the adversary heard that they were doing a work for God, they begin to do all they can to try to hinder the work. See, the more effort that you put forth towards your spiritual house, the adversary is going to do all he can to hinder you from working on your spiritual house. He will help you work on your natural house. He won't discourage you from working on the natural house. But when it comes to the spiritual house and you getting to the house of the Lord, you can best believe that, hallelujah, he's going to do all he can uh, to stop your progress. And that Satan, he is determined, oh Lord, to stop you, but you must be more determined to do what God has given you to do with respect to his work and with respect to his glory. Hallelujah. The people of God, they accomplished and they laid the foundation and they began to celebrate with joy. They began to shout because they realized it was a great accomplishment. Hallelujah. Although the devil tried to stop them, they still prevailed. They still overcame whatever obstacle the enemy tried to put in their way. Hallelujah. God gave them the victory. And it takes, saints, a made-up mind. It takes a desire not only to please God, but an effort, oh, Lord, towards God and toward the spiritual things that pertain to God. Well... The work wasn't done. The foundation was laid. And now it was time to build upward and build upon that foundation. Well, the adversaries, they didn't stop. They began to fight even more. And they did all they can to try to stop them from making progress. Hallelujah. See, when you make provisions for the spiritual house you're you're making progress in God you're making progress towards God 
But when you begin to neglect your spiritual house, that progress has stopped. And Satan is happy when you stop because he don't have to fight you. Hallelujah. He don't have to hinder you. Sometimes we can become our own hindrance. We can become our own obstacle. We become too busy entertaining this physical house, providing rest and food and provisions for the physical house and the spiritual house lie waste. And so the adversary, he was able to stop the work of God, but yet God was not done. The people, they returned home and they stopped working on the house of the Lord. That's the worst thing we can do is stop altogether and give up. See, because the devil, he's not giving up until you give up. He's not going to slow down until you slow down. Hallelujah. If you show up every day, he's going to show up every day. Well, if you show up once a, once a week, well, that's okay. He don't mind you doing a little for your spiritual house. Hallelujah. Because when you do a little for the spiritual house, that means you're doing a whole lot for the physical house. Oh, he's a good God, saints. Well, God, he sent a word. Hallelujah. And I thank God for God's ways is his word. And his ways are so much higher than our ways. And God wants us to consider, consider our ways. Hallelujah. Look at what you're doing and look at what I, God, has instructed you to do. Hallelujah. The people said one thing, but what they said is what God didn't say. They, what they say wasn't agreeing with what God was saying. Their ways were not aligned with God's ways. And this is why God said, consider. Consider your way means to think, ponder, examine your ways. Hallelujah. Consider your ways and then compare them. Hallelujah. To God's way. Glory to God. Because our ways by themselves, we think our way is right. But when we look at our way in comparison to God's way, we say, my ways don't measure up. Uh, my ways need to improve. My ways need to change. We must consider, compare, and then change. It means amend your ways, correct your way so they align with God's ways. And God, he said, is it time for you to focus so much on your physical house? And yet the spiritual house of the Lord is lying waste is being neglected. Well, the people, they may say, well, I come every now and then. Hallelujah. But yet, God said, that's not enough. If you want to, your spiritual house to survive, if you want your spiritual house not to fall apart, if you want your spiritual house to remain strong, see, strength is just not a uh, from working out one day, but it's several days of building physical strength. And one day just won't allow you to build enough strength, hallelujah, to increase your strength. But yet, God, he began to show them, I want you to see your ways. And the only way they were to see their ways was by the word. Of the Lord. And sometimes this physical house, our carnal mind, oh, don't want to hear God's ways. Because when I hear God's ways, it's going to show me my way. And I want to stay comfortable in my way. I, I want to continue in my way. But if you continue in your way, Hallelujah. 
your physical house will fall, your spiritual house will fall apart. Ah, and see, when God, he used the prophet Isaiah to tell Hezekiah, set thine house in order. He wasn't talking about his physical house. He was talking about a spiritual house. Hallelujah. There's a spiritual house that, oh, we must not neglect. Glory to God. And if we so desire, oh, Lord, to glorify God and for God to take pleasure in it. Oh, he's a wonderful God. Well, God told his people it's time not to focus on your physical house, but to go up, hallelujah, and go and get the wood and the, and the material necessary to start building. And he said with a sense of urgency, mm, he, he's saying that you got so much effort and energy, oh Lord, to put towards your physical house, but can't we, are you willing to put forth that same effort and energy toward your spiritual house? Oh, he's a wonderful God. And Jesus, God said, bring the wood and build a house that I might take pleasure in it and I will be glorified. See, when you all spend all the time on your physical house, you were pleased, but yet the Lord saved me and gave me a spiritual house that I might please him and bring glory to his name he told the people you looked for much and lo it came to little and as it means today they did less for God but they expected more they want God to do everything for them but they do little or nothing for them God and God said when you brought it home I did blow on it uh, because my house is laid waste uh, and you run every man to his own house uh, well the word uh, of God must have got their attention uh, the word of God uh, must have stirred them up uh, if the word don't stir you up uh, nothing else will uh, people will get excited uh, Oh, for the natural things. They get happy when the money comes. They get joy when their favorite team is successful. But yet, if the word don't stir up the joy of God on the inside and motivate you, to do more for God nothing else will he's a good God after the word came the spirit was stirred up in Joshua the high priest in Zerubbabel and all of the remnant they were stirred up by the spirit See, the physical house, uh, oh, Lord, is dying daily. Uh, regardless of how uh, much provisions you make, uh, oh, this house, uh, this earthly tabernacle uh, is going to dissolve. Uh, you better start working uh, and stop neglecting uh, your spiritual house, uh, which will abide forever either with God or without God it's an eternal house not made with hands and when you receive a word God's way is his word you ought to consider your way
ways and not no one else's ways. Your husband can't save you. Your wife can't save you. The, oh, Lord, the adversaries, they came to Joshua and said, let us build with you. We seek the same God you seek. What they told the adversaries, we don't need your help. This is God's house, and we are going to build God's house by his strength and his power. No one can help you work on your spiritual house but you. If your spiritual house is falling apart, it's your own fault. It's not God's fault, but consider your ways. He's a good Good God, as I thank him, how he provides food and shelter to take care of this natural house, but I got to praise for the joy that he gives me in my spiritual house. I got a love for God that burns to do whatever I can to get to the house of the Lord. I have a desire like the psalmist. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because where God's house is, he has provisions for your spiritual house to bring joy, to wash you. To provide rest for your soul. I feel better. Some folk feel better after a good meal at the table. They feel refreshed after a good shower, a good cleansing. They feel renewed after a good nap. But when you bring your spiritual house to God's house, he provides a washing to make you feel brand new. He provides some food to motivate your soul, encourage your soul, and stir up your spirit. There's a sense of urgency. I got to get busy. Busy and uh, working on God's house. And, uh, oh, there's a joy. And, uh, there's a resting place. And, uh, when I get to the house of the Lord, uh, I cast all and, uh, of my cares and uh, all of my burdens and, uh, on the Lord. And, uh, I came in, waited down. And, uh, but when Jesus and, uh, lift my Lord, and, uh, I feel better. So much better. I feel like flying away. I'm free to praise him. No longer bound. Oh, Lord. He's far better. Oh, when he takes care of that spiritual house. Oh, I thank God for the joy. Nothing can entertain my soul like the joy that comes from God. Nothing can make my my joy happy and uh, nothing can make me glad but Jesus and uh, there's a fire and, uh, let us stir up and, uh, the spirit on the inside and, uh, when the spirit is stirred up you gotta move and, uh, Lord let your fire have its way and, uh, Lord let your presence and, uh, cause God I'm gonna be with you and, uh, as long as you work on my house and, uh, but when you go and, uh, and prioritize your house uh, God, he's not there with you. And you better not neglect God to the point where when he come back again, your house is not in order. And when God come, it's going to be so quick. You can't get your house ready. It got to be ready. Get your house in order. Oh, get your house in order. Oh, don't neglect. Don't neglect. Stop neglecting. Your spiritual house. Yes, everything is going the way you like it to go. 
in your physical house, your natural house. But yet, 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 that spiritual house is neglected. Spiritual house is falling apart. You need the joy from your spiritual house. Hallelujah. To help you overcome the problems in your natural house. I'm going to say that again. You need the joy from the spiritual house. You need the patience from the spiritual house to help you endure the troubles that this physical house is going through. That this physical house is suffering. But you don't want your spiritual house to suffer. You don't want your spiritual house to die. You need that spiritual house. Hallelujah. Because there are resources in the spiritual house. They can't be provided by the natural house, by the world. Oh, Lord, the provisions from God come from above. You can't get this word down here, hallelujah, from man's table. You got men, women, hallelujah, ordaining themselves, hallelujah. And that's all they do is get a word from themselves. Oh, Lord, and not from God, hallelujah. Because God, whom he qualifies, amen, he ordains, he calls, he's going to equip, he's going to manifest himself. Glory to God. See, many are self-proclaimed ministers, deacons, bishops, hallelujah, but don't meet the qualifications, hallelujah. God is not with that. God is not with it. His ways is his word. And our ways must line up with the word for God to be with us. Hallelujah. God is not going to be with anything that is outside the word. This is why we strive. Oh, Lord, we're not perfect. But we do all we can to walk in this word. And, Lord, give us more understanding. That we might learn this word and apply the word in the right way, not the wrong way. When you become so enamored with the physical house, you become blind to the spiritual house. Hallelujah. You develop a form of godliness. Because this physical house know how to play church. Know how to act the part. Know how to accomplish works. But the spiritual house is dead. Hallelujah. And there is no life. The word of God is what stirs up spiritual life in us. Note, they obeyed the word. Then the spirit was stirred up. See, I told you, it came forth the word. It was bitter. It was bitter. But why? Because God's ways did not agree. They, their ways did not agree with God's ways. But when they submitted Hallelujah. All of the leaders, the leader were responsible too, the remnant, when they obeyed, that's when something stirred up <laughs> on the inside. Hallelujah. See, your fire has gone out because you've neglected the things that are spiritual, neglected your time of prayer with God, your private prayer with God. See, people like private time, but they don't make private time with God. You know, this flesh like, oh, I like my quiet time. Hallelujah. But you need to make some private time with God. <laughs> you see the difference between the physical house and the spiritual house? Oh, God said, consider your ways. All of these things you're doing for the physical, you better make sure you're doing the same and even more for the spiritual house. Hallelujah. Note this, I said, same, if not more. Holy, we should be more excited for the spiritual things that pertain to God. And with that, I'm talking about the saint of God. Because the world is excited about the things of the world, the things that are carnal. You put these carnal things in perspective. Oh, but my joy, hallelujah, come from God. Hallelujah, my greater joy. I thank God I love my wife. Oh, but I have a greater joy and a greater love for Jesus. <laughs> and I know she has a greater love, hallelujah, for the God, oh, above all gods. Don't let people become your God. Don't let things become your God. Hallelujah. 
Things in themselves are not God. People in themselves are not God. But we can make them God when we put them before God. We find more joy in people. We find more joy in counseling in people and fellowship with people than we do God. We make more time to spend with people. Hallelujah. Then we do God. Then now, now what people will say, well, you know, I don't go anywhere. I, I'm in the house by myself. Well, now you become your own God. <laughs> oh, can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Uh, see, we like to try to justify. Hallelujah. And that's what the people did. I'm going to justify. Well, we, we're just working on our own house. But you're neglecting. You're neglecting. That more important house. Hallelujah. We make all these, we justify, oh, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to go to the doctor, I got to go get my prescription, I got to. Let me tell you something. In the house, the spiritual house is this, being neglected. Let me say, let me tell you something. I got to get the noonday. I got to get this word as much as I can. That's when the spiritual house is more important than the physical. Mm Mm-mm. Honey, that's what I have to do. Oh, these prescriptions, they can wait. These doctor's appointments can wait. I may need to make an appointment with my Jesus as much as I possibly can, saints, because time is growing short. And, saints, so many have just forsaken their spiritual house. And God, he has sent an on-time word for the remnant, a small group that's left. Hallelujah. Saying, don't fall, oh Lord, away. You made so much progress. They built the foundation, but then they stopped building. Don't, you know, now is not the time to stop building or slowing down. It's time to get up and stir up. God was trying to stir them up and motivate them. It's not time to slow down. It's time to get busy. It's time to get better. And we can say, I'm going to get better. But we don't do what we say. Whew. That means the word did not have an effect on it. If the word don't stir you up, nothing else will. Nothing else will. I praise God. I praise God for this message. Because this message was for me. I thank him when he's speaking to me. Hallelujah. He's noted, I said the three things. You consider your ways. Hallelujah. You compare your ways to God. Hallelujah. Then you look to change your ways. That is how you benefit in a spiritual way. Hallelujah. When God's word come, don't resist it. Don't say amen and then don't do nothing. Hallelujah. Don't nod your head and say, yeah, that's right. But then don't make a change because you're not going to prosper. You're not going to benefit. God told him to get up. He, needed, he wanted them to see some action. And when that word stirred them up, you know, there's situations situation in your life sometimes that get your attention and really stir you up to say, Lord, I, I can't be messing around. Hallelujah. Because time is growing short. I got to get busy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, I'm sorry for neglecting. Oh, Lord, my spiritual house. I got to pick up where I left off and keep working, keep working, keep working. Hallelujah. How long do we keep working? Until the day is done. Until then. Until then. Hallelujah. We keep on working. The God called us home. Hallelujah. The devil, he's happy when you stop working. He's happy when he sees you once a week at the house of the Lord. He's happy because he knows that your spiritual house has no strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just a, a, a given fact. If you feed the the physical body one time a day, hallelujah, by the end of the day, that body going to be weak. Hallelujah. They tell you three square, three square meals a day just to be able to sustain strength throughout one day. And then you need to do it over again the next day and then the next day. My God. Hallelujah. Same with the spiritual house. You get one meal, you're not going to be strong. Hallelujah. The way you could if you get two or three meals. Come on, let's, let's, be, let's be real saints. Hallelujah. See, in order for you to consider your ways, you've got to be honest with yourself. 
Hallelujah. And look at yourself, hallelujah, objectively. Oh, Lord, and say, Lord, yes, I can do better. Hallelujah. Lord, I can do better. I can do better. He's a good God. He's worthy to be praised. Have your way, Lord. Have your way.